In this Wrestle Talk news, Braun Strowman ironically loses control of his own narrative, a conspiracy theory in WWE. Who are the top babyfaces and heels in WWE and more? Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos. And, and, and thank you for all the well done Andy comments after he hosted Monday's news, but th that's over now. It, it was just a one-off. I don't want to read any more well done Andy posts. Just Ollie. Just well done, Ollie, from now on. Support Wrestle Talk. Support Wrestle Talk! We're over a week out from WrestleMania now, but the wrestling world is still fixated on the weekend's biggest appearance. Elias's younger brother Ezekiel debuting on Raw. There have been some accusations though that Ezekiel isn't actually who he says he is. Some have speculated he's actually NXT call up LA Knight, while other more outlandish theories reckon he's actually <laughs> His older brother Elias. Whatever, Alex Jones, it's quite clearly not. Elias has a beard. It's annoying that people like Ezekiel, when they should be enjoying their WWE debut, feel the need to defend themselves against such ridiculous claims like, I'm actually my brother, or WWE is paying loads of bots to be mean about my promotion. But defend himself, he has. Posting a picture to his Instagram handle, I am not Elias WWE, of the two brothers standing side by side with the caption, haters will say it's photoshopped, but we all know the truth. Haters like Kevin Owens, who's tweeted his conspiracy-loving frenemy forever, Sami Zayn, HELP ME! To which Sami replied, They will try to minimize you because you speak the truth. Keep fighting the good fight! I must say that picture is pretty convincing though. Some people will just continue to believe what they believe no matter the overwhelming evidence. No one's replied to that. There's leaves growing out of his goddamn arm. Think. It's exactly the sort of comedy storyline you'd want for the number two heel on your show. A new report from PW Insider has revealed the internal listings for the top three baby faces and top three heels on Raw, which is the document the creative team are given to prioritize stories. On the heels side we have, at number three, the House of Purple, with Edge and his incredible disappearing Damian Priest. Number two is the aforementioned Kevin Owens, and the number one heel on Raw, as determined by WWE themselves, is Seth Rollins. On the babyface side, the third biggest good guy on Raw is... AJ Styles, with the freshly returned Cody Rhodes in at number two, leaving the biggest babyface on Raw to be. I don't think there's anyone else left there. Oh, it's Bobby Lashley! Yeah! In the own. In the, in the, in the atmosphere. Over on SmackDown, Roman Reigns is listed as the number one heel, while Drew McIntyre is the top babyface. Cody will likely be moved up to be Raw's top babyface in the next month, but it shows just how thin WWE's main event scene has become in the immediate wake of WrestleMania, when the celebrities return to their proper jobs, and Stone Cold and Vince McMahon recover from that stunner. Speaking of that stunner, was it the worst of all time? Watch our top 10 worst and top 10 best stunners countdown over on Parts for Known. Before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends! The dark fantasy RPG which you can download right now for free to iOS and Android using our link in the description and pinned comment below. Today, I'm going to show you my new favourite champions I've been using in the game, like Seth Alia, a super support champion with a huge heal ability. Heal is H-E-A-L, they're not H-E-E-L, who I like to pretend is the lady version of Seth Rollins. Ew, Kingslayer. Glazea Soul Guide, the Ice Queen who's all about freezing her opponents, aka the Chili Taker. And Gorgorab, the undead ultra support total package whose weapons seem taken directly from a classic Triple H WrestleMania entrance. And Happy birthday to Raid Shadow Legends! 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 As this month, it's Raid's three-year anniversary, which they're celebrating with awesome new champion skins, like for Arbiter, who looks like Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania 37. Ugh, Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania 37. Now is a great time to get started in Raid, and if you click my link in the description or scan the QR code on screen now, you'll get a free starter pack worth almost $40. That's three free champions at once. Misery Cord, Tiger Soul, Romero, plus 10 Magic XP Brews, 10 for 
Force XP Brews and 10 Spirit Brews, all of which will be waiting for new players here for the next 30 days. Please do click on our link in the description or scan the QR code on screen now to check out the game for yourself, as you'll not only love it, but every install helps support us here at WrestleTalk. Thanks for supporting us for these last few years, Raid. Raid that raid. Kevin Owens isn't the only one slowly losing his mind on Twitter. Braun Strowman has managed to botch social media posting three times in just a few days. Former WCW and WWE star Buff Bagwell posted about EC3's new wrestling promotion, Control Your Narrative, CYM for short, which Strowman, now called Titan or his real name Adam Scher, is a part of. I just joined CYM. Wait, never mind, it was just gas. Which is either Buff making a joke that CYN, with its attempt at having edgy rules, is a load of hot air, or it is literally a fart. So Strowman decided not just to control his narrative, but also Buff's, by bringing up Bagel's recent troubles with the law. Funny you're gonna try and throw shade, cause what you think it's the cool thing to do, you wanna look edgy? Cause you sure were a mark asking to take a picture with me. You should probably worry about your narrative. With a picture included of a report showing Buff being arrested on more than 10 charges related to speeding last May. Strowman continued to rage. Don't come at me or my company unless you want it back. Everyone thinks it's funny to talk crap, then I roast them and they cry victim. Not a surprise on this app though. And it's sad, isn't it? Also, imagine being someone defending those actions like they are okay. So Buff retaliated by controlling Braun's narrative, tweeting, Adam Scher, something about glass houses? I'm open about my past mistakes and tend not to bring others up against them. You got offended because I made a joke about something I didn't even know you were a part of because I didn't know you. And Buffs included a picture of a report that Braun was arrested for operating a boat while intoxicated in 2013. And my agent wanted me to get a picture with you. It was no different than any other fan I took a picture with that weekend. Strowman countered, saying that while he did get a ticket for the boat, he wasn't with WWE when it happened and he definitely didn't spend the night in jail. And then he started to backtrack on his initial outburst. And I'll man up right now and admit I came at you too hard. I went for the kill and shouldn't have. I understand you didn't know I was a part of CYN, but imagine you being one of the boys taking shots at a place, giving work to other wrestlers. We should be sticking together to better the industry. It's toxic enough with the IWC. We shouldn't be going at each other of social. Best wishes. Which Buff accepted, replying, I agree we should be sticking together, but we also need to listen Listen to the fans, even the ones we don't like because they pay our bills. Let's all be better. Bicep curl emoji. Much love, brother. Just as Braun almost had control of one narrative, another flared up immediately. Thanks for your support on Patreon, Double L, Liam Leonard, and Spider-Man's greatest villain, Dr. Dark Seven. Many online started to point out Strowman's whole sticking together ethos rings a bit hollow after his post two years ago, as wrestler Jordan Oliver tweeted, The f are you talking about? Remember when your clown ass was shitting on indie wrestling? Imagine you being one of the boys taking shots at a place giving work to other wrestlers. Lots of clown emojis. This is in relation to Braun's Instagram posts at the start of the pandemic, criticizing indie wrestlers who had fallen on hard times for asking others to pay their bills via GoFundMes or Patreons. Over the last week, Braun has also taken aim at AEW and Tony Khan, tweeting that watching Dynamite would be a far worse punishment than watching all three hours of Raw. He also posted a parody version of Khan's own odd tweet over the weekend, where the AEW president had accused WWE of creating an army of bots to say bad things about AEW on Twitter. Braun's version being, an independent study has confirmed that much of the staunch anti-CYN online community aren't real individuals, it's a staff running thousands of accounts an army of bots to signal boost them. Looking closely, these aren't real people who'd pay for such a wildly expensive thing. Hashtag, what a mark. Buff Bagel's a bot. Ben Strowman went one further and posted the old conspiracy theory that Khan pays wrestling websites and YouTube channels like ours money to say nice things about AEW, which, which totally isn't true. Did I do good, Tony? 
Why is there no face to palm emoji? This is the same guy that pays the dirt sheets and says his wrestlers are free to do whatever but blackballed them from CYN shows. Why? Because we're a f***ing threat. CYN isn't just controversial for its seemingly anti-indie style vision for wrestling, but also for the wrestlers on its roster like Austin Aries and Flip Gordon, both of whom have seemingly fallen out of favour with the major companies because of their personal views on topics like the pandemic and how round the earth actually is. But while Strowman claims Khan has banned his wrestlers from appearing on CYN shows, he also says, so many people want to work with us and both our shows have had tons of AEW talent backstage watching. We are the new option. You've been warned. There is part of me that suspects CYN could all be some kind of weird meta joke. Focus on the troll part of control your narrative. But that trolling could also be ideologically sincere for those wrestlers and fans who feel excluded by the increasingly left-leaning pro wrestling industry, where studies suggest pro wrestling fans are more politically to the left than any other sport. The proof will be in CYN's success. There really is an audience for their branding. They'll make money. If not, they'll stay at a small oddity level, relying on Twitter outbursts and outrage stunts online to remain relevant. What's your thoughts on CYN? I'd love to hear your thoughts below either way because I can't figure out if they're actually connecting with fans in the way they want to. Comment down below and then go watch the 10 best and 10 worst stunner cells in WWE history with Adam Blompier. After Steve Austin had his final and very, very silly match in Dallas, Texas, it got us thinking about the very best Stone Cold stunners the Rattlesnake ever hit in his storied career, and what would the very best be if they weren't also presented alongside the very worst? I'm Adam from Parts Fun Known, and here are our 10 best and 10 worst stunners in WWE history.